So we're here in Westbrook at Maple Breeze Farm and Maple Breeze Farm has been called out I don't know for how many generations. This farm originally started in 1635 when one of my ancestors, John Wright, emigrated here from Boston. John and Bonnie Hall are famous in American milking Devon circles, that's for sure. John's family came to America on one of those big wooden boats that we hear about at Thanksgiving time. And both the cattle and the people ended up in Connecticut. They've been farming there in Westbrook on the same land and the same farm and the same line of cattle since 1635. But they're not just known for Devon cattle, because when you plant yourself somewhere, you have a chance to put down strong roots. In this case, those roots are maples, growing for centuries. John's great-greats have been tending and tapping those steadfast trees for almost 400 years, and you can taste it in the lovely amber syrup that they sell at farm stands across the New England area. We sell all of our meat products, beef and pork, we sell our eggs, we sell our maple, and we sell my cousin's dairy products here for them. We have our local product. We have three markets right now that we're doing every weekend in the summer and we cultivate those customers and encourage them to come here to the farm in the winter. And we've got long-standing customers that have been coming here for Saturdays for years anyway to buy the product locally here. In Connecticut, we're not known for being a heavy commercial maple state. Um, the big producers are Quebec, New Brunswick, of course Vermont, and New Hampshire and Maine. But as you get down nearer the shore, the smaller states, Rhode Island, Connecticut, it's mostly um, hobbyists um, or ancillary to some other operation. So this is kind of ancillary to the rest of our operation, but we're a little bigger than most Connecticut maple people. We have 1,200 taps. We have the 3 by 12 evaporator that you see here. Um, we make a fair amount um, for a Connecticut producer. Most of them make a few gallons and that's it, either hobby, family, friends, or small farmer's market sales. So um, we're a little bigger than that, but we're certainly not a commercial producer. And being done old school is the way we like to do it. Um, you can buy bigger machines, newer machines that are oil fired, propane fired. Um, you can use reverse osmosis to take a lot of the water out mechanically before it even hits the evaporator. Um, I tend to think that changes the flavor a little bit. Scientifically, it doesn't have any, any um, substantiation for that. But um, you know, when people taste our maple, it's unique. It has a little bit of... Uh, it's, it's like wine tasting, a little nuances, a little nuances of wood smoke, a little nuance of our soils, and it pretty much all comes to the soils anyway. It's like wines. You can almost tell the region the grapes were grown um, by the finished product. And, and, you know, there's other maple producers, even just a few miles from here, their syrup tastes a little bit different, and to me it's the soils. So why is maple syrup so expensive? Well, you can get the inexpensive flavored stuff in any store. But when you make it the old school way, it takes a lot of sap and a lot of work. You start with 50 gallons of sap and end up with one gallon of syrup. But you can really taste the difference. First, you have to wait for the perfect moment between freeze and thaw. Then you have to tap the trees and lug the maple sap into the sugar shack. So some of these runs down here along these stone walls are some of our best producers. Obviously these ones right here have their roots in the water. So it's not like even in a dry year they got plenty of moisture. But some of these trees like this one here, I mean how old is that tree? That's got to be 200 years. It hasn't grown a bit in my lifetime. This one here is the same story. Some of these are old mature trees. We'll see some up here that are even bigger. 
these are some of our <clears throat> our best runs and they say a maple the the bigger the crown the top of the tree the root mass equals that so they're better producers they're going to be rather than like in the woods where they're all together and straight up like a couple here are right straight up they'd produce less than let's say this one with a huge crown huge canopy of limbs up there So this is where we store the sap. Once we collect it in the woods, we pump off the trailer into these containers. They're on the north side of the building here so we don't get sun um, creating mold issues or fermentation or getting the sap too hot. Um, a lot of seasons we have snow, we shovel around it, keep them as cold as we can. The elevated one is our gravity feed tank into the sugar house and into the evaporator. You can see the level is about 75 or 80 gallons left in that. It feeds in automatically. Um, that was full when we started a couple hours ago. So um, you can see we've used that much already today. And you can see up top the steam is coming out of the steam vents. We'll see that coming off the evaporator inside, but um, that's running pretty good when you see steam coming out like that. Then you boil it in a big vat and carefully bubble most of the water out of it. This evaporator was built, I think it's 1992. This is not an antique or anything. Um, it is wood fired. Some of the newer ones you can have oil fired, propane fired, whatever. We still prefer the traditional uh, wood fire even though you'll go through easily a quart of wood a day with this if you run it for eight hours. It's old school wood fired. It's been done that way for hundreds of years. And the stainless is, um, it's a soldered pan but it's soldered with lead free, certified lead free solder so you don't have any lead in the maple. Some of the old, old antique pans were galvanized or lead soldered and the industry's gotten away from that as we've learned more about lead and lead poisoning. So, so this evaporator, when it's, when it's boiling at the speed it's boiling at right now, which is pretty much capacity, is supposed to evaporate 60 gallons of water off per hour. So when you see that steam going up, if you condensed it all back, you'd get about 60 gallons of water in an hour's time coming off this. and pour that liquid gold into bottles. And there it is. Look at that. Put it right up to the window and you'll see the you light see and the that? color. That's a thing of beauty. And this is the finished product after we put the labels on it, I've graded it, I've put a nutrition label on it, and I am ready to ship this across America. Okay, so Bonnie, you just said we're going to ready to ship across America. We were just talking about that bottle right there, but you're actually going to ship all of this for me because I don't want to risk this at customs. This is both the dark and the light yes. maple syrup that we just saw being made. And boy, now I am kind of looking at this and saying, this is like gold, this stuff, because right. I've seen the effort that goes into it. Right. I, and I'm also thinking how you got that in that tiny little bottle with that spout. It's pretty impressive. So that, uh, this is this cute little farm store that you have here at Maple Breeze. And yes. where do people find you if they want to find you? They can go to Bonnie Hall um, at, um, on Facebook. Mm -hmm. they, can, they can go to Instagram, too. I am hooking to Instagram. I'm getting up into this century. So um, they find us at Farmer's Markets, and we've got the word out that way, too. So on the weekends, they can find you at Farmer's Markets. And starting in May. Starting in May, yeah, I can see how maybe not so much in the winter time. Right. But you get quite a following here too. You have we people do. that come in on Saturdays from nine to one. Uh, this place can be hopping. Yes, yeah. it is. We tried to film yesterday, and every two seconds, beautifully, but every two seconds, people were coming in to say, "Hey, can I see that?" And That's right. Does it is it is it this busy in regular seasons too, or be, or is it just everybody who knows you're sugaring? Well, I put it out on Facebook, so a lot of people will bring families that haven't seen it before, and we love that because we love to educate. You know, an educated consumer is our is our best consumer. You know, we want them to know what they're buying, why they're spending the money that they're spending, what we've put into it, and our values are in our product. Now, one of the nice things, at least here in Connecticut, and we have John in back of us here listening to us, but one of the nice things is that you can do farm stands and farmer's markets, and it seems like the New England states are very friendly to small farming and farm stands. Is that true? It is. It is. We do, well, at one point, uh, I was doing six a week, and it was just a little overwhelming. The farmer's markets you farmer's were? Farmer's markets. Wow. Yes. Wow. 
when there's only seven days in the week and I was six of them moving somewhere, it's packing the truck up, packing all my, you know, things because you set a table, you set a nice table, you want it to uh, reflect who you are and um, how you do things. So for the maple syrup, as, as you saw, I, I put out a nice display to show people how we do it. I am a visual learner, so I want people to see it. I can't bring them to the farm when we're at a farmer's market, but I can bring things to show people how we do it. And that and that's one of the things that you have to do as a small farmer is you're selling your story and yourself as much as anything, you, you know, because because it does cost more. You're not doing this in a mass production model, right? Exactly. So it costs more per piece. I, I, I Like I said, I'm looking at that maple syrup back there and thinking, you do not charge enough for this because that's a huge amount of work. It's a lot of work. Right. And you don't just get distributed at Walmart, right? Right, right. And we're not in stores. I mean, people have asked us to put it in stores, but it is such a intense, um, small it's an intimate time that we're process, doing it. It is, it? it is. Yeah. And I'm just, we don't want everything to go to one place. I mean, it's it's John's story. It's become my story, yeah. but it's John's family's history and uh, a lot of love goes into each each bottle that we that we put the syrup into. So we want to we want to be right with the consumer when it's being sold. Yeah. And tell that story. So just like John and I are always the ones at a market, we don't hire anybody to come and represent us. It's both of us together usually mm. um, telling the story. If you have a hankering for maple syrup, real maple syrup, head on over to Westbrook to see the magic for yourself.